How to reduce pesticide use. Pesticides are materials used to control pests such as insects, rodents, weeds, molds, and germs. Pesticides come in various forms, including sprays, liquids, powders, granules, baits, and foggers. Pesticides can have a big impact on the environment around us. Around 1 billion pounds of conventional pesticides are sprayed and scattered each year in the United States, and many of these chemicals remain in soil and water for months or years, killing far more than just the garden pests we hope to eliminate. They can leach into the groundwater and disrupt the life cycles of pollinators like bees and butterflies. Over time, your plants will become less healthy, which makes them even more susceptible to pests. In addition, you'll be exposing yourself to the harmful chemicals in these pesticides, which could affect your health. Luckily, you can help reduce your need for pesticides by growing healthy plants and using natural pest-fighting alternatives. In this video, we're going to teach you about the most effective strategies on how to reduce pesticide use. Welcome to The Guardian's Choice. How to Reduce Pesticide Use Number 1. Adjust the nutrient content and pH of your soil. Healthier soil leads to healthier plants. Stop by a garden supply center or reach out to an agricultural extension office in your area to get a soil testing kit. Then, use the kit to test a sample of your soil to see if you need to adjust the levels of vital nutrients like nitrogen, potassium, lime, or phosphorus. When your soil is well balanced, your plants will be healthier, which means they'll be able to resist pests more easily. Purchase lime or phosphorus from a garden center if you're low on these nutrients. Follow the label instructions for mixing them into your soil. Add wood ash, a potassium-only fertilizer, or compost containing banana scraps to raise the potassium in your soil. If your soil is low in nitrogen, mix in composted manure or coffee grounds. You can also plant cover crops like alfalfa or nitrogen-fixing plants such as beans and legumes. You can also use a pH testing kit to determine whether you need to adjust the pH of your soil. If the pH is too low, add lime or wood ash to raise it. If it's too high, use compost sulfur or aluminum sulfate. Number 2. Add compost to the soil before you plant. Compost feeds and aerates the soil. Compost is made of organic scraps like lawn clippings, leaves, vegetable peels, and even coffee grounds. As it breaks down, it creates a rich fertilizer. Try mixing compost into the top 6 to 12 in, 15 to 30 centimeters, of your garden bed before you add your plants. The compost will help aerate the soil and will give your plants more access to water and nutrients, making them stronger and healthier. Composting at home is one of the easiest ways to divert food and garden waste from the landfill. If you don't do your own composting, though, you can buy compost from a garden center. Number 3. Top the soil with mulch to help prevent weeds. Add a 1 to 3 in, 2.5 to 7.6 centimeters, layer of mulch to protect your garden bed. Mulch is a ground covering, typically made of organic material like wood chips, pine straw, or compost. If you're using pesticides to control weeds, a simple layer of mulch can help prevent those weeds from growing in the first place. In addition, mulch provides a ton of other benefits for your plants, it helps your soil retain water, regulates the temperature of the soil and plants' roots, and adds nutrients to the soil, for instance. Just be sure to keep the mulch about 1 in, 2.5 centimeters, away from the stems of your plants so it doesn't affect their growth. Number 4. Choose plants that are native to your location. Native plants will often thrive without much intervention. They may even be naturally resistant to the pests in your area, after all, they've been growing without human intervention for thousands of years. In addition, you usually won't have to worry much about watering them, which is great for the environment. You can also have good luck growing plants that are indigenous to areas with similar climates to yours. Be sure to check that the plants you're growing are well suited for the sunlight and soil type where you'll be growing them. Number 5. Fill your garden with pest-resistant plants. You can get information about these plants from a local garden center. Some varieties of plants are more effective at fighting off pests and diseases than others. These plants are often developed through genetic research and selective breeding. For instance, agricultural researchers are working to develop varieties of crops like corn and potatoes that are more resistant to pests. By opting for these varieties, you'll be able to cut down on the need for chemical pesticides. Number 6. 
use a variety of plants in your garden. Pests usually prefer to target one specific plant. If your whole garden is filled with that plant, an infestation could wipe out your whole harvest. On the other hand, if you've planted several different types of plants, even if one section of your garden gets attacked, you won't lose everything. Try to include plants that flower at different times, as well, these will provide food and shelter to some of the natural predators of the pests in your garden. Number 7. Follow the specific care instructions for your plants. All plants have their own unique requirements. Research your plants online or talk to someone at a local garden center so you know how to maintain them. That might include things like how often to water or fertilize your plants, how to prune them, and when to harvest them. If you manage your plants improperly, they'll be more susceptible to illness and pest infestation, which then increases your need for using chemical pesticides. Overwatering your plants can make them more susceptible to diseases like root rot, pythium, and rhizoctonia. Improper pruning can make it hard for some plants, especially trees, to heal correctly, which then makes them more susceptible to insects, fungi, and other pests. Follow all the steps in this video for the best results, and don't forget to subscribe to get all the household tips and tricks you don't want to miss. Number 8. Destroy any plants that are diseased or infested. Check your plants regularly, and pull up anything that's unhealthy. Get familiar with the pests and diseases that could affect the plants you're growing. The signs of an infected plant depend on the illness and the type of plant, but you might see things like mottled leaves, a white mildew on the plant, or rotted and or mushy stems. If you spot any of these signs, pull the plants up right away and toss them into the trash or burn pile. In addition to the risk of spreading disease to your other plants, dead or sick plants provide a hiding place for insects that could then affect your healthy plant. Don't add diseased plants to your compost pile, they'll contaminate the compost, and the disease will likely spread when you add that compost to your soil. Number 9. Rotate your crops to decrease their vulnerability. Pests and disease may be more likely to occur in the same location. That's because if they've already infested some of the plants, they can live in the soil until the next growing season. Once your plants start growing, they'll be exposed to those same insects or diseases. On the other hand, if you grow a new crop in that location, the pests won't have a host, and they'll be more likely to die off. Number 10. Use mechanical controls as a first line against pests. Try trapping or killing pests at the first sign of a problem. Don't just spray pesticide as soon as you see insects on your plants. First, make sure you know exactly which insects are even a threat to your plants, most won't be harmful, and some are even beneficial. If you do spot a pest that you don't want around, try removing the insects you can see. You may be able to stop the problem before it gets out of hand. If you see bugs on your plants, you might pull them off by hand or spray them away with a garden hose. You could also use mechanical controls to prevent pests, like placing nets over fruit bushes to keep insects out. Number 11. Protect insects' natural enemies. These natural enemies will help control the insect population. The insects that are destroying your plants might seem invincible, but they have a lot of natural enemies, including birds, beetles, wasps, spiders, bacteria, fungi, or nematodes. There are some cases where you could have success introducing natural enemies to your garden. However, the best way to harness this strategy is typically by protecting or attracting the natural enemies that already live nearby. For instance, avoid using chemicals that could impact a beetle species that feeds on the aphids that are ruining tomatoes. You might also try attracting certain birds to your area, which may then eat the insects affecting your crops. If you have rats, use cats to help get rid of them. Contact your local agricultural or cooperative extension office for information about what natural enemies will be most effective for the pests you're dealing with. Number 12. Apply pesticides selectively if you do use them. Use spot applications rather than treating a large area. In some cases, you may find that an infestation is too severe to be treated without chemicals. If that happens, choose a pesticide that specifically targets that pest and apply it only to the most heavily infested areas in your garden. Also, look for pesticides that are non-persistent, meaning they will lose their effectiveness shortly after you apply them. You may need to reapply these pesticides in order to completely eliminate the pests. You may need a longer-acting chemical to treat some pests or severe outbreaks. Keep in mind that the longer a pesticide is active, the more likely it is to harm beneficial organisms like bees and natural enemies of pests. Number 13. 
Consider bait stations if you have to use a rodenticide. This can help reduce the risk that a different animal will find the bait. It's especially important if you're using a bait that's made with food, like grains or peanut butter. If you aren't using a bait station, place the bait somewhere that other animals won't be able to find it. For instance, if you're trying to trap a rat, you might place the bait inside a box with a very small hole so squirrels, cats, and dogs can't get to it. Number 14. Avoid using any chemicals that will leach into groundwater. You can find this information on the product label. When you're growing crops, sometimes you might find yourself battling a pest that you can't eradicate naturally. In that case, you might turn to pesticides to avoid losing your harvest. However, even if you do opt for chemical pesticides, it's really important to make sure you're not using something that will contaminate the groundwater in your area. The effects of these chemicals will be strongest in areas with loose, permeable soil and a shallow water table. Choose the method that works best for you and your situation, and help to reduce pesticide use. Follow this channel, to learn many more household tips, tricks, and life hacks like this. If you have other tips, please share them with us in the comments. Hope you enjoy, see you in the next video.